Welcome back everyone to this CUBE conversation, which is part of the Persistent PSI program. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. We've got two great guests for this segment. I'd like to welcome Rahul Bajaj. He is the Senior Vice President at Microsoft Sales at Persistent Systems and Ranju Das. He is the CEO and founder at Swan AI Studios. Thank you both so, so much for coming on the show. Absolutely. Thank you, Rebecca. Glad to be here. I want to start by having you familiarize our viewers a little bit about uh, your your organizations and your roles at the organization. Ranju, I want to start with you. Tell us, tell our viewers a little bit about Swan AI. Yeah, Swan AI Studio is a recently launched healthcare company that's focused on uh, inventing platforms and building companies in this uh, unique uh, uh, intersection of healthcare uh, technology and machine learning. Uh, the uh, advent of machine learning is is disrupting every industry. Uh, it's uh, very common knowledge at this point. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, in impact of AI ML into healthcare already, uh, and we are trying to harness that fo focus towards administrative uh, efficiency for payers and providers, for higher engagement with patient, and for a better outcome for health for uh, all population in general. Okay, Rahul, tell us a little bit about Persistent and your role there. Absolutely. So Persistent is uh, almost 33 years old and uh, we are leaders in earlier in software engineering and now we call it digital engineering, enterprise monitoring, you know, a fastest uh, monetization I meant, uh, a fastest growing company in this space, really focus on the US market. So almost 1.1 billion in revenue with a market cap of around $5.3 billion with uh, 23,000 uh, 23, employees uh, operating from around 21 uh, countries. Yeah, so our mantra has always uh, been to, you know, stay close to the customer, understand their needs, uh, stay ad ahead of the technology so that, you know, we can beat our competition. Engagement model uh, has been, you know, with our size, you know, stay nimble. Again, customer initiatives, you know, and, and Swan AI is, uh, is one of the story. So, yeah. And uh, about my role, uh, you know, I'm Rahul Bajaj and a senior vice president, Microsoft Sales, uh, been with Persistent for almost 18 months now, came through an acquisition company that uh, I co-founded along with my partner and uh, we got acquired uh, last year. Uh, again, have, um, you know, have created GTM strategies, set up offshore delivery centers for Microsoft both for application as well as, as, well as uh, uh, cloud, uh, cloud factory models. So I'm based out of Princeton, New Jersey. Got it. Now, both of you are relatively new-ish to your, to your organizations. Of course, you're, you're veterans in, in, the, in the industry, but, but both new to the organization. Your partnership is really cool. And, and Swan AI, there's so many, it's, it's such an exciting ambition. Um, there's so many exciting use cases for for AI and healthcare. Tell us a little bit about the partnership, Ranju, and the challenges you face and why Persistent was going, why, why it appealed to you as a good fit. Uh, Persistent has been a great, uh, almost a personal partner to me for many years now. Um, during my time uh, in my prior roles, be it in Amazon, be it in United Health, every time uh, I needed uh, an external vendor to come in and solve problems that are you know time sensitive, needed high quality uh, uh, skill set in very you know short burst, persistent was always there. Um, through that journey, I've had uh, created a, a deep relationship and trusted relationship with Rahul, who I've found out to be uh, very customer obsessed, which is what I always look for in any vendor. So uh, as I uh, started this journey with uh, Swan AI Studio, and you could imagine in the early days in this nascent form, when we're looking at multiple ideas, many partners asking us to solve multiple problems, uh, speed to market is important, right? And within that, the quality is an important part of earning that credibility and, and trust with the market. And uh, it was an easy decision for me to look into a, a, a vendor, a partner that I've worked with uh, many, many years, and particularly my relationship with Rahul in that journey uh, to, to collaborate with them in trying to solve some meaningfully uh, impactful problems, if you may, um, that uh, has that time to market, high quality need, and, and a sensitivity from a customer, if you may, a vendor, if you may, uh, of that balance of, of quality and, and, and speed. 
So Rahul, I want to hear about it from the persistent perspective. I mean, we are hearing so much about this, this trusting relationship that you both have, and clearly you have collaborated on, on various uh, projects and partnerships in the past. What was it when you were hearing about the issues that Swan AI was dealing with? How did you ensure that you were the right partner and, and which approaches did you use? I mean, so it is, it is always critical. I mean, first is to understand the requirements. Uh, you know, from a customer perspective. Now, important in this case was time to market. I mean, we had very little time for this product to be launched and, you know, and to be market ready. So, you know, we knew that solution would be very highly intuitive. So we have to make it scalable. So we leveraged uh, the experience of our Gen AI team, uh, our healthcare team. Uh, so at Persistent, you know, we've been incubating Gen AI for a while now. Uh, ensuring you know we have the right pool of resources for engagement like this. Now, we started this journey around uh, in uh, early 2022, um, launched more than 50 uh, solutions which are very focused in Gen AI. Uh, and yeah, I mean, so we we knew that we were ready for this. Uh, and of course, as I said, you know, HLS is 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 very close to us. I mean, we at persistent 20% of our revenue is HLS focused, which is healthcare focused. So yeah, I think uh, you know the approach came out naturally. I mean, we were we knew that we are ready for this. Yeah. Ranji, walk us through this engagement. Talk a little bit about what you were, the, the kinds of solutions that you were coming up with with persistent. Yeah, so there there are almost two classes of problems we're going after, right? One, we are trying to uh, build companies, as I started saying, right. Um, and that starts with us identifying a, a meaningfully uh, large customer problem. Then we internally, and that's an internal process of the studio, we uh, explored these ideas to some depth to understand, is there a true uh, uh, solution that has enough motivated buyers? Is there a commercial aspect to this uh, product, right? And healthcare is, as everybody knows, healthcare is an extremely complex space. Uh, so we are being very thoughtful upfront. And in the journey, we want to build some uh, pilots and prototype that we could take to customers and show them to deal with the ambiguity that is inherent in the space. And I think that's where the persistent team comes very handy, right? They, we can almost parachute this special ops group of people that comes in, works with us very closely, hands and glove with us, uh, and, and build up the solutions that we can then take to some of our key strategic partners and customers to get the validation before we decide to move into forming a new, new co or a startup. Um, on the other hand, as we are in this journey, some of it is because of our uh, track record of the partners in Swan Studio. Uh, there's a lot of partners and, and vendors that are customers are saying, hey, we have this very burning problem. Can you solve it for us? And in those cases, especially when it relates to technology and machine learning, it's about framing that problem again, right? How much time does a customer have to get it solved? And then uh, once we have identified kind of the architecture, if you may, then we can immediately bring in a partner like Persistent who can then come in, of course, provide their own uh, uh, own direction and angles in that and help us delivering the solution in a timely manner, right? With the quality that we have bar. And so far it's been very successful. We have had a very successful um, customer delivery uh, in a very, very aggressive time frame. Um, and uh, we are very close to launching our first startup in December and uh, persistent uh, resources and uh, have a lot to do with uh, getting us there. Can you talk a little bit about the specific problems that you're trying to solve? Yeah, in yeah, terms so, of, uh, yeah. absolutely, sorry. Um, I've done my homework and it's really cool stuff and I wanna make sure the viewers hear Yeah, that. no, 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 I think it, it, you know, I think on on the companies that we are trying to form, they're in the triangulation of interaction between a provider, which in the healthcare world, think of uh, your doctors, your nurses, your hospitals, a uh, patient who is us in some cases, or our, our, our loved ones, or our family, or friends, or whatnot. And then there's this pair, right, which could be their uh, insurance companies or your employer. So uh, we, are, we are trying to look at meaningful problems in that space, which would allow us to apply machine learning to for instance, an, an example could be how can we connect uh, a doctor and a hospital system to patients more easily 
without needing more time for this from providers who are already burnt out, who are already over leveraged, right? While creating a high engagement for patient. And it seems like an intractable problem, right? The way to connect them is take more time from the doctors or more doctors. So we are trying to see, can we bring technology and machine learning to solve that problem, right? Um, so that's one class of problem. Other class of problem would be all around, there's a lot of administrative in inefficiencies, right? From your claims to, you, uh, to your payments, to how you uh, schedule, can we help with machine learning and technology in there? So there's a second class of problems we are looking there. Um, on the solution side, that a very interesting problem we had to solve was, you know, uh, a customer of us wanted us to uh, do a prototype around can we detect safety of their uh, end customers, patients in their bed while they're in the hospital, right? And uh, that was a very interesting problem because you could imagine a real world hospital room with different lighting, different uh, uh, occlusion, eye coverage of you know, curtains and people walking around. And within that, being able to detect with high accuracy, a human being that's supposed to be in the bed, whether in the bed or they've fallen off the bed was a really hard problem. And we took it on. Um, uh, we applied some uh, cutting edge computer vision technology to that. We brought some edge computing to that problem, and we were able to solve it with some very, very high efficiency with very high accuracy. Wow, that's really incredible. And you can just really see how beneficial this would be to patients and, and healthcare organizations, and of course, the loved ones who are worried about how about their, their loved one's safety. Um, Rahul, talk us a little bit, talk to us a little bit about how you approach building these solutions. Um, I love what Ranji was saying about the sort of the, the parachuters coming in and, and applying this ML. Um, how, how do you collaborate, particularly since you two do go way back, how do you come up with finding the right core technologies and making sure you're defining the problem in the right way? I mean, so important uh, is to understand, and again, as, as I said, like, you know, almost 20% of our re revenue comes from healthcare. We work with three out of the top five healthcare payers in, in the US, five out of the 10 uh, top healthcare providers. So we, we have immense experience as a, you know, as a service provider. Now, uh, when, when this problem um, or when Ranju came or uh, Swan came up uh, with this requirement, I mean, yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, it was a complex, I mean, but uh, you know, all kudos to our uh, CTO office. I mean, uh, you know, they had worked on similar solutions, uh, similar product engineering uh, uh, capabilities, which, uh, you know, which were improving, um, you know, improving uh, consumer experience. And so we had, uh, you know, we had the pieces, uh, some of the pieces ready. I mean, we worked in a, in a patient, uh, very recently we worked on uh, patient care next, which is, you know, end-to-end -end patient journey, uh, application so so little, little bit pieces from there and of course overall requirements from Swan I think uh, you know uh, together with our CTO office which had worked on Gen AI capabilities I think it was uh, you know it was an easy way out so yeah overall I think this was a collaborative effort between persistent team and uh, Swan team uh, to come up with a solution. Ranju, what were the key performance indicators that you were tracking? How were you measuring success here? Yeah, it's you know I think for me uh, this is a this makes it life easy for me, right? Be it, be it my uh, software development or machine learning resources inside, or whether I'm uh, outsourcing, be it from a partner or a vendor or a third party. I think it starts with the quality of resource, right? and it starts with an objective goal that we believe can be assigned to a resource with a very specific timeline that's realistic, right? Once we have those, and when the resource agrees upon that. At that point, it's about meeting these goals. And that gives us a very clear understanding of quality of resource. That along with in the software world, it's easier to measure you know, code quality or, or quality of any uh, deliverables, be it algorithm or tuning or thereof. Um, the second aspect was important to uh, break down this otherwise complex project into milestones because we knew the customer requirement well. We did the work of breaking down the milestone and then holding all delivery, both internal and external teams, to that milestone timeline, right? Any milestone timeline was would have added risk. And so we were effectively managing the delivery timeline. 
Um, and then finally is really the 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 in a, in a product case what you would call a product market fit. In this case, it was the solution fit to what the requirements were, right? So with every uh, sprint, every two weeks, we were looking at what we are building. And is it really a step towards where we're going or are we diverging off, right? So kind of the product effectiveness was a third piece that we were always measuring in near real time. And we had to make adjustments in the journey, right? Both in our approach, in some of the resources, in some of our, uh, you know, the one, uh, one challenge that we saw as we started building that. Part of a success is customer got excited and they asked more. They're like, hey, hang on. I know we, <laughs> said, we said this, but can you do this and that? Because this is looking so good, right? And, you know, one of the things that, you know, this is probably a bit of uh, Amazon in me, uh, customer obsession trumps everything else, right? So we said, all right, we'll try. And it was amazing for persistent team to say, okay, let's collaborate. Let's see through how we can, you know, deal with this uh, changing requirements. Even more important, became even more important to understand those three, right? What is a quality of our resources, how effective are we with our timeline, and how effective is the solution we are building towards what the customer has asked of us? Well, Rahul, this is that's a really interesting point um, Ranjay just brought up about this customer obsession uh, and and customers who have these voracious needs and say, "This is great. We need we need more. Can you do more? Can you do it again?" Um, how do you make sure that you are being responsive? and proactive about delivering on what your customers are asking for without frankly burning out your DevOps team because they're also working hard and trying to also be customer obsessed, but but their but their jobs are hard and the technology is relatively relatively new. Yeah, yeah. I mean again, I, I think as Ranju mentioned a little bit, uh, that you know, two week sprints, that's those are good checkpoints to have. You know, a global delivery. I mean, I mentioned earlier that you know, operating from 21 different countries have a global delivering methodology. So you have teams in different geographies. Uh, absolutely. I mean, there's always there's always changes when we're talking about customer requirement changes immediately, you know, we turn around. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, we are blessed with a good team, uh, solid foundation. I mean, product engineering uh, has been, uh, if you go back history, I mean, almost 30 years, that's been our forte. I mean, Persistent is recognized as a product engineering company. So yeah, I mean, we're used to such uh, such changes in the requirements and uh, and this was no different. I mean, yeah, as mentioned earlier, the timeline was a little aggressive. You know, we made sure that, you know, in today's market where, you know, capability, I mean, you have to find the right capability, but to get it on right on time is, is always key and, and uh, you know, it's challenging sometimes. So yeah, I mean, those were the few things that we were, uh, we were kind of always focused on that we have the right team available at the right time. So yeah, yeah. Overall, I mean, that's that was the approach. Ranju, what is next for Swan AI? What does your growth look like for for next year and the years to come? Exciting time for us. Very early starting days. Uh, uh, we are exploring multiple ideas at this point, right? And uh, the uh, simple uh, foundational approach has been: we'll start with exploring ideas. Once we feel an idea has some uh, legs, some merit, we'll uh, spend some time in framing that idea into a product, right? Which I'm calling an incubation. Uh, once we have incubated an idea with some validation of uh, potentially some customers, uh, feasibility of the engineering and, and science or clinical aspect of it, then we'll uh, choose to decide whether we want to build a prototype out of it, which I'm calling a protocol. Uh, once we have built the protocol, at this point, we want to get customer validation. We want to get uh, user experience validation. And then we get to graduate it into what I'm calling a forming a startup or a new co. Uh, and at that point, it's races to a scale company, right? Uh, so we understand that journey. Everybody understands the journey of how to make a startup to a scale. Uh, what we want to do is spend a lot more energy in validating the foundational aspects of a good business upfront. So by the time we form a new co, by the time we form a startup, we have higher conviction of success there. And that big, that means some ideas would get killed upfront, be it in the incubation or the protocol phase, but it just guarantees a better uh, environment for uh, the team that's working. Because, you know, having been in startups, you don't want to be in a startup five, seven, nine years, and then you have lost team, as well as for investors and customers, right? It's it's a, it, I think it's a win-win uh, situation. Um, so we are looking to uh, focus on, as I said, even before that triangle of payer, patient and provider uh, problems around uh, helping with operating income or uh, operating expense reduction, because I, I think commercially successful businesses have to deal with that. 
as a direct uh, uh, corollary to that, we want to make sure it, we are improving patient engagement, customer consumer engagement. It's a common complaint across the board. I haven't met a single person in my journey, in my lifetime, and especially in my last uh, four years with uh, in the leadership role of UAG, any customer who's saying they're ecstatic about their healthcare experience, right? Um, so we want to make that better. And, and by the way, it's not uh, a lack of trying from any organization. It is a complex space, right? And yet there is an effort needs to be made to improve on that. So uh, keeping in mind how to improve uh, patient engagement, keeping in mind how to reduce the healthcare uh, uh, inequity that exists, the disparity of access that exists. Uh, that's what we are excited about. And then we are bringing in this experienced operator. We are bringing in uh, uh, specialists of healthcare, machine learning, technology all together to ensure that we have a robust go-to-market and, and scalable products in the market. Um, we are uh, very close to announcing our, our first startup. Uh, we are looking at in the next uh, few weeks to, to be able to uh, announce to the market our first uh, startup. Uh, we actually, uh, I know the process is working. We actually went through a rigorous journey of incubation for one idea and we said it wasn't ready yet. A and we are exploring three more ideas and, and we are, um, you know, scaling the team. Uh, we are uh, raising uh, more fund and uh, we are in continuous conversation with strategic partners, uh, you know, like-minded health systems and health plans to see where are the gnarly problems that we can help with. Rahul, how about you? How about Persistent? We're, we have very few weeks left of 2023. Uh, what are you looking at for next year and beyond? I mean, again, the focus is, is Gen AI. I mean, we are preparing our teams for that. Absolutely. I mean, now more than ever, I mean, if you, you know, again, I'm from Microsoft side. So, you know, you go to a Microsoft, even technology companies that they're asking for how ready you are industry aligned. So yeah, I mean, Gen AI absolutely is from the technology perspective, but more industry red ready, uh, you know, uh, ensuring both, I mean, BFSI again is, is almost 40% of our revenue and uh, uh, healthcare is 20%. So yeah, we will be ensuring that, you know, we have technologies who are ready, but they are industry aligned. So that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's, those would be our uh, key focuses. Well, Rahul and Ranju, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE. This has been a really fascinating conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm Rebecca Knight. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE. You're watching theCUBE, your leader in enterprise technology coverage.